Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 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 So we are reading from the seventh canto Chapter 12, text 12, 13, and 14. So I will read the um, Sanskrit and English translation of text 12 and 13, and then we will um, responsively chant text 14. Anjana Vyanjanon Nan Marda Striavaleka Mishang Madhu Sraganda Lepa Lakarangs Tajayur Ye Brahadvataha Translation Brahmacharis or Grihastas who have taken the vow of celibacy as described above should not indulge in the following applying powder or ointment to the eyes, massaging the head with oil, massaging the body with the hands, seeing a woman or painting a woman's picture, eating meat, drinking wine, decorating the body with flower garlands, smearing scented ointment on the body or decorating the body with or ornaments. These they should give up. Text 13. Vishitvayavam guru kule dvijun tit yava budyacha traying sango panishadang yavad artam itabalam. That was text 13. Now we will read responsibly text 14. Tadva varam anugyato. Guru Kamang Yadishvara Graham Vanang Va Pravishet Pravrajet Tetra Va Vaset Devavaramanu Gyato Guru Kamang Yadishvara Grihang Vanang Va Pravishet Pravrajet Tatra Va Vaset Tatva Varang Anugyato Guru Kamang Yadishvara Grihang Vanang Va Pravishet Pravrajet Tatra Va Vaset So the word for word, we'll actually read 13 and 14 because they're all together. Ushitva, residing. Evam, in this way. Guru Kule, under the care of the spiritual master. Dvijaha, the twice born, namely the Brahmanas, Kshatriyas, and Vaishyas. Aditya, Aditya, studying Vedic literature. literature. Ava Buddha, understanding it properly. Understanding it properly. Cha, Cha, and, and. Trayim, the, the Vedic literatures. Saanga, Saanga along with supplementary parts. Along with supplementary parts. Upana, Upanishadam, Upanishadam, as well as the Upanishads. As well as Yavat Artam, as far as possible. Itabalam, as far as one can, according to one's ability. Dattva, giving. Varam, remuneration. 
Anugyata, being asked, Guru of the spiritual master, Kamam, desires, Yadi, if, Ishvara, capable, Graham, household life, Vanam, retired life, Va, either, Pravishet, one should enter. Pravrajet, or get out of. Tetra, there. Va, either. Vaset, should reside. So translation by Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. According to the rules and regulations mentioned above, one who is twice born, namely a Brahmana, Kshatriya, or Vaishya, should reside in the Gurukula under the care of the spiritual master. There he should study and learn all the Vedic literatures along with their supplements and the Upanishads according to his ability and power to study. If possible, the student or disciple should reward the spiritual master with the remuneration the spiritual master requests and then Following the master's order, the disciple should leave and accept one of the other ashramas, namely the Grihastha ashrama, Vanaprastha ashrama, or Sannyasa ashrama, as he desires. So please repeat. According to the rules and regulations mentioned above, one who is twice born, namely a Brahmana, Kshatriya, or Vaishya, should reside in the Gurukula under the care of the spiritual master. There he should study and learn all the Vedic literatures along with their supplements and the Upanishads according to his ability and power to study. If possible, the student or disciple should reward the spiritual master with the remuneration the spiritual master requests and then following the master's order the disciple should leave and accept one of the other ashramas namely the Grihastha ashrama Vanaprastha ashrama or Sannyas ashrama as he desires Purport by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. To study the Vedas and understand them, of course, requires some special intelligence. But the members of the three higher sections of society, namely the Brahmanas, Kshatriyas, and Vaishyas, must learn the Vedic literatures according to their capability and power to understand. In other words, studying the Vedic literatures is compulsory for everyone but the Shudras and the Antyajas. The Vedic literature gives the knowledge that can lead one to understand the absolute truth, Brahman, Paramatma, or Bhagavan. Gurukula, or the reformatory educational institution, should be used only to understand Vedic knowledge. At the present time, there are many educational institutions for training and technology, but such knowledge has nothing to do with understanding of the absolute truth. Technology, therefore, is meant for the Shudras, whereas the Vedas are meant for the Dvijas. Consequently, this verse states, Dvijo tityav buddhyacha trying sango panishadam. At the present time, in the age of Kali, practically everyone is a Shudra, and no one is Dvija. Therefore, the condition of society has very much deteriorated. Another point to be observed from this verse is that from the Brahmachari ashram, one may accept the Sannyasa ashram, Vanaprastha ashram, or Grihastha ashram. It is not compulsory for a Brahmachari to become a Grihastha. Because the ultimate aim is to understand the absolute truth, there is no necessity of going through all the different ashramas. Thus, one may proceed to the Sannyasa ashram directly from the Brahmachari ashram. 
Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur accepted the sannyasa ashram directly from the Brahmacharya ashram. In other words, His Divine Grace Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur did not think it compulsory to accept the Grihastha ashrama or Vanaprastha ashrama. Om Ajnana Tamaranda Shaganandana Shalakaya Chakshuran Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha So as usual, these verses in the Srimad Bhagavatam are extremely rich and there is a lot here. First of all, Srila Prabhupada makes the point in the purport that there are so many educational institutions for training and technology, but such knowledge has nothing to do with understanding of the absolute truth. And then, of course, he says, the Vedic literature gives the knowledge that can lead one to understand the absolute truth. So they're, they're polar opposites. What we uh, supposedly learn and the so-called educational institutions uh, in uh, the modern world is the opposite of what we actually need to make our lives useful. But does that mean that that education is useless? Hmm, let's find out. So, if you all don't mind, I'm going to refer to Bhagavad Gita, uh, chapter 13. For those of, uh, those of you who have electronic devices or other access to Bhagavad Gita, you can look at chapter 13, uh, text 8 through 12. For those of you who have transcendental brains, you may just remember it and be able to get it out of your internal file. I don't have such a brain. Um, but Krishna states in uh, the 13th chapter, text 8 through 12, I'll just read the English. Humility, pridelessness, nonviolence, tolerance, simplicity, approaching a bona fide spiritual master, cleanliness, steadiness, self-control, renunciation of the objects of sense gratification, absence of false ego, the perception of the evil of birth, death, old age and disease, detachment, freedom from entanglement with children, wife, home, and the rest, even-mindedness amid pleasant and unpleasant events, constant and unalloyed devotion to me, aspiring to live in a solitary place, detachment from the general mass of people, acceptance, accepting the importance of self-realization, and the philosophical search for the absolute truth, all these I declare to be knowledge, and besides this, whatever there may be is ignorance. I don't know, that's pretty clear. Besides this, whatever there may be is ignorance. So is it clear? Well, Maybe. There's another thing I want to refer to. Srila Prabhupada gave so many lectures <coughs> on so many verses in Srimad Bhagavatam. Unfortunately, these particular verses I could not find any lecture. However, uh, these verses are a continuation of many other verses from this chapter. And so, there is one lecture in Bombay April 17, 1976, where Srila Prabhupada speaks on the sixth verse of this chapter in Srimad Bhagavatam. Hmm. So, a few days ago you already read the verse, I won't read the verse. But Srila Prabhupada says, So now, actually behavior, the first thing is Sushila, very well behaved, gentle, Shila means behavior and Su means very good. Sushilo mitabuk. This can be attained only when one practices eating whatever is absolutely necessary, not eating more. Sorry. 
This is also enjoined by Rupa Goswami, Atyahara Priyasas Cha Prajalpa Niyamagraha. Atyahara, eating more than necessary, is condemned everywhere. Spiritual life means reducing eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. That is spiritual life. Rupa Goswami and other six Goswamis, they conquered over these things. Nidra Ahara. So a brahmachari should not eat anything except prasadam. That also, when he is called by the spiritual master, you can come and eat. This we have discussed. So this next paragraph is actually very relevant. So mitabuk, we shall be very, very cautious about eating. And daksha, daksha means active, not lazy, sleeping. This is not good. Nidra ahara vahara. Everyone has to conquer over sleeping, so that is called daksha. And daksha means expert. Whatever business is entrusted to him, he does it very nicely, daksha. Just like Raghunath Das Goswami, he had no interest in material things. His father's estate was very big and he was not interested. But at a time when there was a political situation, he tackled it very nicely. This is the example of daksha. There was some political controversy between Raghunath Das Goswami's uncle, father uncle, and the government minister. So the minister, in order to take advantage, he came to arrest Raghunath Goswami's father and uncle, and they fled away from the house. So the minister arrested Raghunath Das Goswami, the son, because if he was chastised, he'll disclose the secret where his father and uncle had fled. And so Raghunath Das Goswami, it is a long story, tackled the situation so nicely that there was peace between the minister and his father and uncle, and the misunderstanding was settled up. So this is called daksha. Not that because he has become Krishna conscious and Vaishnava, he is unable to do anything of this material world. No. One who is Krishna conscious, he is conscious of everything and he knows how to deal with them. That is called daksha. Not that because I have become Krishna conscious, I have no knowledge in other things. No. Every, you must have, if not complete, to know something of everything. That is intelligence to know something of everything and to know everything of something. That is wanted. You may be expert, a devotee. You know everything of devotional service, but you should not be callous. You know something of everything. That is called daksha. Daksha shradhadhana, faithful. Faithful to whom? To the spiritual master. Whatever he says, the brahmachari should take it. Yes, it is my life and soul. That is the explanation given by Vishwanath Chakravarti Tagore. He is explaining with reference to the verse Vyavasayatmika Budhir Ekeha Kuru Nandana. Be very, he very nicely explains. You have perhaps read it, Vishwanath Chakravarti Tagore's. Vishwanath Chakravarti Tagore has taught very, very nicely about Guru. Therefore, he has written in Guruvashtaka, Yasya Prasadad Bhagavat Prasada. He is example, practical example of Guru Bhakti. Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. He accepted his guru, Narutama Das Thakur. So he said that I am not interested for my salvation or going back to Godhead. I am not interested. Interested means it may come, it may not come. That I don't mind, but I am interested only with the words of my guru. Vishwanath Chakravarti said, that is my life. Whether I will be successful or not successful, it doesn't matter. I must take the words of my Guru Maharaj as my life and soul. <laughs> Actually, that is the secret of success. Yasya deve para bhaktir, ita deve tatagro, tasye te katata yarta prakashante. Does anyone know the rest? Because it's Mahatmanaha. It's not stated here, but thank you, Maharaj. So that is the secret of success. Shraddha nana. To accept the words of Guru very, very faithfully. Shraddha. This is brahmacharis and jitendriya, self-controlled. That is the brahmachari. He is not agitated by the senses. The whole practice is to control the senses. That is Vedic civilization. I have several times explained that senses cannot be let loose. Senses must be controlled. That is called swami or goswami. Swami does not mean that I am the swami, husband of my wife, and I can use her to my best capacity. No. Swami means the master of the senses. That is called swami or goswami. Goswami means senses and Swami, everyone in this material world is controlled by the senses. That is material world. We cannot control our senses. The tongue is dry and dictating. 
take a cigarette, take a cigarette, and immediately I begin to smoke. That means I am dictated by the tongue, then tongue, then belly. The belly is filled up, and still there is some nice food stuff. All right, let me eat. Control cannot control. And then genital, that we know very well we cannot control. This straight line, tongue, belly, and the genitals. Therefore, one should control the tongue first. That is spiritual life, beginning, controlling the tongue. Sevan Mukhe hi jiwado. The controlling of the senses begins from the tongue. If you allow the tongue to eat anything in the restaurant or anywhere, then you cannot become the jitendriya. And if you cannot control the tongue, my dear tongue, I shall not give you any food which is not offered to Krishna, Krishna Prasadam. Then the tongue is controlled. And Krishna Prasadam means patram pushpam palam toyam yome bhaktiya priyachati. If you want to offer Krishna something, we must know what Krishna wants to eat. Just like if you call a friend, you ask him, my dear friend, what do you like to eat? Then it is etiquette. And that is going on. Similarly, you have invited Krishna here. He has come. Don't think he has not come. He is here. Sakshad Vrajendra Nandana Hari. The atheist may say, oh, these rascals are worshipping a stone. But that is not the fact. We are not spending so much energy and money for installing a stone. Stone is already there. Therefore, it is forbidden. Arche Shilatir Gurushu Naramatihi. If you think the deity as Shila means stone, and Gurushu Naramatihi, if you think Guru as ordinary human being, Vaishnava Jati Bhuti, and if you think of Vaishnava, he is American Vaishnava, he is Indian Vaishnava, Jati Bhuti Naraki, you become Naraki immediately. These are the descriptions. So, Jitendriya. A brahmachari means jitendriya, simena dhamenava, tapasa brahmacharyena. Tapasa, brahmachari life means tapasya. This is life, not that extravagant life is life. That is the present position of India, that we have lost our own culture. Brahmachari, grihasta, vanaprastha, sannyasi, this is compulsory. Every child should be trained up as brahmachari. Then when he is completely trained up, if he still likes to get into married life or household life, which is a concession for sex life, it is not required. According to Vedic civilization, it is not required. You'll find, therefore, many Naishtika Brahmacharis. Naishtika means never any connection with woman. That is called Naishtika Brahmachari. And Upakurvana Brahmachari. Upakurvana Brahmachari means he is married, but not for enjoying. He is married and to beget nice children under the order of his spiritual master. He is also a brahmachari. If a grahasta abides by the order of a guru, he is also a brahmachari. So here it is said, Jitendriya. Sushila mita bhug daksha shradarano jitendriya. Senses should not be used extravagantly. The modern civilization is that if you can use your senses more and more than you are civilized, then you are enjoyer. So Vedic civilization is different. Their aim is different. The whole scheme is controlling the senses, especially sex, because if we become too much addicted to sex life, then our life is spoiled. This is this. Therefore, next line, it is said, Yavad artam vyavaharet strishu. With woman, you should be very, very cautious and careful, as much as required, not free mingling. No. Therefore, according to Vedic civilization, there is always a separation between women and men. Here in India, we find that whenever there is some meeting, the women are sitting separately, men are sitting separately. This is required. And not only that, you cannot talk even with women unnecessarily, even with your wife. This is restriction. Therefore, it is said, Yavadartam Vyava Haret, as much as it is required. Don't talk unnecessarily. Pish, pish, pish. That is very dangerous. Dangerous means in spiritual life. Yavadartam. Even with your mother, with your daughter, with your sister, you cannot sit in a solitary place and talk. This is restricted. What to speak of others, even with your mother. So according to Vedic civilization, there is very, very strict stricture to mix with women. And in our childhood, we have seen in Calcutta that those who are aristocratic family, there are two sections of the house, male section and female section. During daytime, even the husband cannot meet wife. That is their restriction, even the husband. There was no chance because the women were in different house and men in a different house. So, so many restrictions. So here it is said, Yavad Artam Vyavaharet Strishu. 
So in the Bhagavad Gita verses, uh, chapter 13, 8 through 12, we learned what is education. But all those things were categories. Hmm? So Srila Prabhupada goes into more detail here that one of those categories was acceptance of bona fide spiritual master. So Srila Prabhupada is giving specific directions how to honor and obey and serve one's spiritual master. He's also giving uh, the definition of a brahmachari and a brahmachari grihasta. <coughs> so if one follows these definitions of brahmachari grihasta, then naturally, although you have a wife, children, home, relatives, duties, and so forth, then you don't become entangled in attachment with them. Affection must be there, duty must be there, but because you're accepting these things on the order of the spiritual master, if a grihasta abides by the order of a guru, he is also brahmachari. So here it is said, jatendriya. Senses should not be used extravagantly. So if one follows this, then naturally one remains detached, even in the midst of doing one's duty. Hmm. So this is education. It is completely opposite of what we learn uh, in the modern education. However, uh, we also learned earlier in this lecture that Srila Raghunath Das Goswami, is everyone here familiar with Srila Raghunath Das Goswami? Anyone here not familiar with Srila Raghunath Das Goswami? So Srila Raghunath Das Goswami, Jai Shri Shri Krishna Balaram, Jai Shri Shri Radha Shama Sundar, Jai Shri Shri Gornitai. So Srila Raghunath Das Goswami is sometimes referred to as the personification of renunciation. He had absolutely zero interest in anything of this material world. However, Srila Prabhupada uses him as an example of someone who very expertly dealt with the material world in a, a very materialistic and entangling situation, a political situation that had to do with money, that had to do with government, that had to do with family. All nonsense things. We know it's all garbage. All only has to do with the three modes of nature and mostly passion and ignorance. However, Srila Raghunath Das Goswami was able to deal with it very expertly. So if he had never observed, or never learned, or never had any education on how to do these things, how is it possible he would have dealt so expertly? <coughs> so then we see that actually even this material nonsense education, it has its use. Because in the Krishna Consciousness Movement, and as followers of Sri Rupa Goswami and the six Goswamis and, and Lord Chaitanya, we are yukta vairagis not Falgu Vairagis. We take everything and we use it in Krishna's service. We take everything that would otherwise be nonsense and we dovetail it in Krishna's service. We spiritualize those things. So Srila Raghunath Das Goswami, he did that perfectly. We, not be, may not, we may not be able to do it so perfectly. We also heard about Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur that he was speaking in this way. He said, let me take the order of the spiritual master is my life. I may be successful or not successful, but I must try. Prabhupada defined daksha. We usually hear the word daksha as meaning expert. But Srila Prabhupada, before he said that daksha means expert, he also mean, said it means active, not sleeping, uh, not inactive or falsely renouncing but active and expert uh, dealing with those things that are necessary to fulfill the mission of the spiritual master. Hmm. So we must know things. We must also be, to some extent, conversant in the mundane matters of the world. 
because we are Goshtananandis. We are meant to go out and give Krishna to others, not sit in a solitary place and simply chant. However, in chapter 13, text 8 through 12, one of the categories that Krishna gives us is desiring to live in a solitary place. The interesting thing about this is Krishna doesn't say living in a solitary place. He says desiring to live in a solitary place. So Krishna consciousness, we are not impersonalists. We're not meant to make desires nil. We always have desires. That is natural. That is the nature of all living beings, to have desires. But Krishna consciousness means that you hold Krishna's desires as paramount. And you have faith that whatever desires you have will automatically be fulfilled by focusing on attempting to please the senses of Krishna. And that is actually logical. It's not just sentimental. <coughs> Krishna is the source of everything and everyone. So Krishna, Prabhupada gives such a wonderful example uh, in accordance with the previous acharyas that if you water the root of a tree, all the leaves and branches will be nourished. So if we actually want our desires to be fulfilled, first of all, water the root. Now many of you here actually have the great fortune of living in India and in about two months it will be so hot that you could put out a subji in an open pot without any fire or ghee and it will be finished in an hour by the sun. <clears throat> so at that time when you water a tree you must water the root, that is absolutely required. But also you sprinkle something on the leaves and, and branches, yes? Just to give it a little relief. So Prabhupada describes sense gratification like salt. Just to maintain the body you need a little salt. But when you get too much salt, so many problems are there. High blood pressure, stroke, heart disease, cardiovascular disease, pulmonary diseases, everything. If you have too little salt, you become dehydrated and you take some water and a little salt and you correct it. Unless you let it go for a really, really, really long time, it's not so urgent. But it should be addressed, no doubt. But too much salt, that is much more urgent. That will create problems very quickly and very long-lasting. So both are problems, no doubt. If you're not fully satisfied, if you don't feel your mind being peaceful, and getting what you may need, which is different for everyone, you have to address that. There's actually no need for us to become a dry impersonalists without any affection for anything or anyone. That is not required nor recommended. But it is a razor's edge. We have to see what we actually need, and then anything more than that becomes very dangerous and bad for our health. Hmm. So as I mentioned, <laughs> these verses are extremely rich. There's just so much there, and we've touched on so many points. Uh, we have a little time, and I would like to hear from all of you wonderful Vaishnavas, if I could. Um, so we have another microphone here. Yes, Prabhu. Hello. Okay. Hare Hello. Krishna. I just wanted to uh, if you could read again the sentence in the third part from the Bhagavatam. Mm -hmm. There was something mentioned about technology being for two days, if you could just read like that part, yes. like the sentence before they mentioned that. 
Gurukula, or the reformatory educational institution, should be used only to understand Vedic knowledge. At the present time, there are many educational institutions for training and technology, but such knowledge has nothing to do with understanding the absolute truth. Technology, therefore, is meant for the Shudras, whereas the Vedas are meant for the Dwijas. I'll just read a little bit more. Consequently, this verse states, Dwijo Tityava Budyacha Trayim Sango Panishadam. At the present time, in the age of Kali, practically everyone is a Shudra and no one is a Dwija. Therefore, the condition of society has very much deteriorated. Okay, thank you. Just wanted to make sure Sure. Any, would you like to expand on it a little? Okay. Yes, Prabhu. What is the, in the purport? If, if you don't mind, let's, let's do it in the microphone. Yeah, there we go. In the purport is this Atajayas. What is Atajayas? In, in, in other words, not even that it gives you as a plus for everyone who sues in the Atajayas. Yes, okay. Um, yeah, I know what you're talking about. I just, I can't find it in here. But the Atajayas, um, uh, so in a, Earlier verses in this, I, I looked that up also, that I was confused about that. So in earlier verses, Srila Prabhupada mentions the Atyajas are um, children born of mixed caste. That uh, due to society at that time, they actually didn't have the, the right to um, study Vedic literature or have a place in regular Dwija society. Although there are exceptions to that rule, but that was the general, if there's a mixed gas child. Does that make sense? Jai. Okay. Yes, Prabhu. Karana Bhajra Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, I, he's saying that um, when the spiritual master uh, allows us to get married, that it is the order of the spiritual master. But when we get married, sometimes instead of remembering our um, responsibility to the spiritual master, we just do our own thing. Is that right? So, are you asking a question or making a statement? Okay. Okay. Um, well, to my understanding, um, as with any order of the spiritual master, there is a, a process. If the spiritual master says, go out and distribute books, you have to know how to do it. So usually you have to go to another book distributor and learn from him, and then follow the process of distributing books, and then books are distributed and the mission is executed. So similarly, one thing that we're gradually developing uh, in our Krishna consciousness movement is instead of just, you know, going out and hunting down a wife as though we're going to the local Kmart and getting shampoo, is that we take help from senior Vaishnavas to find an appropriate and compatible partner with which to execute the Grihastha Ashrama so that we can bring forth Krishna conscious children who will execute the mission of Srila Prabhupada. So it's a process. So first of all, we have to go to our seniors and take help from them how to enter into the Grihastha Ashram. Additionally, once we enter into the Grihastha Ashram, we're not on an island. Nowhere you go, anywhere in the material world, do you just get to, you know, two people live in solitude. It's not like Blue Lagoon. You know, you're, you're in a community, you're in a society. You have a responsibility for the greater good. So you consult with seniors who have done it, who have failed, and learn from those failures. Actually, it's said that success is just that person who tried one more time after their last failure. So it's important that we go to senior grihastas and learn some of the tricks of the trade, as they say, and then move forward with their guidance. 
and then you can have graha, successful grahastha ashrama because it's a service just like any other if you want to learn how to be a pujari on the altar you learn from other pujaris if you want to learn book distribution you learn from other book distributors it is the same with grahastha ashrama is that okay yes Maharaj yeah I'm, I think there's a very nice answer you've given to a point which is brought up mm. I think nowadays our society is becoming more mature Thank you, Maharaj. <clears throat> I read something recently that I thought was very interesting. In Japan, uh, they go through schooling in a very different way. The first four grades, grade one, two, three, and four, they have actually no academics and no testing on academics. They only learn character. So it's really a question of timing. That in the formative years, when you're very young, if you learn, humility, pridelessness, and the other aspects of good character that Krishna describes, then when you get older and the spiritual master assesses your psychophysical nature, 
and gives you uh, specific tasks, it will be easier to resist the temptation of pride. Because earlier in your life, you'll, you'll learn that you're simply a servant and that you're one ten thousandth the tip of a hair. And for those of us that didn't get that in our formative years, it is so, so difficult. But one thing that gives me hope is that there's another story of Srila Prabhupada who was traveling with one disciple and the disciple turned to Srila Prabhupada and he said, how, how can we please you? As your disciple, how can I please you? And Srila Prabhupada thought about it for about a minute, didn't say anything. And then he turned to the disciple and he said, the spiritual master becomes pleased when he sees you struggle. So I was thinking about that. What is it? Spiritual master likes to see suffering? No, it's not that. It's that in this world, there's two th main things. You're either struggling or you've given up. So the spiritual master is happy and pleased when he sees that in spite of, in, in spite of the things that we're not capable of presently, in spite of the things that we have to face uh, from our upbringing, uh, from our contamination, from our <clears throat> savage nature. As long as we struggle against it, the spiritual master is pleased. So it's much, so much easier. It's so much less of a struggle. Of course, then there's other struggles as you go on to the next level. But um, if you learn early, that's why the Guru Kula, it's so important that one get guidance from spiritual authorities at a very early age. Uh, Samit Pani Brahmanishtam. That uh, you actually go to fetch firewood for the spiritual master at the age of five. So when one learns that he's a servant, whether it's young or older, whenever it is, it's important to understand it. Then the humility and pridelessness can be cultivated. So these are japa beads. Is everyone familiar with japa beads here? So there's so many beads and they're all made of tulsi and they're all very wonderful. But the utilization of japa beads is to be able to chant one's rounds and keep track uh, of how many mantras have been chanted according to a vow. So different aspects of education, learning uh, technology, learning uh, accounting, learning reading, writing, arithmetic, diplomacy, uh, law, medicine, whatever it may be, they're like beads. They're like the japa beads. But without the string to bind them together, the utilization cannot be achieved. So without actually understanding real knowledge, which is described by Krishna in the 13th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, texts 8 through 12, you have no string. You just have a pile of disorganized beads. And that's useless for its intended purpose. So beads are fine. Get as many beads as you like, as are necessary to perform your service. But if you don't have the string, of understanding the principles contained in the 13th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, you will not actually execute your purpose. Is that okay, Maharaj? So we have five more minutes. I'd really like to hear from other Vaishnavas. Yes, Prabhu. Koshita Kaur Prabhu. That's a great question. Um, one thing that we've struggled with over the years, as you know well, because we took this course together, is that we don't have such a defined um, understanding of the Vanaprastha ashram at all. You know, going from anywhere into the Vanaprastha ashram 
in our Krishna conscious movement. We're just now developing that. Um, but the Vanaprastha Ashram, uh, as we learned together in the course, is uh, it's not student life. And of course, it's also uh, one step beyond the having household duties life, but it's not quite sannyas. When you enter sannyas, there's, there's quite a few extra duties. Even within ISKCON, we understand you must travel all the time, um, you must engage in certain austerities, there's certain restrictions uh, dealing with the opposite sex and so many things. So Vanaprastha, he still has responsibility to help guide the other sections of society because he's mature and experienced. Oh, I'm sorry. Please clarify. My question is, how can, I, how can you take one across from the Varachar Impossible, because the one across from the is somebody who graduated from the whole solo. Well, it says it's there and there that um, Brahmachari, you can think after that, one across the road, and yes. Is that possible? How can the Brahmachari take one across? Directly Actually, I'm glad you stopped me because I realized that the answer I was giving you was speculation. The real answer is, I don't know. <laughs> I can guess, but I, I, I really don't know. I, all I know is it's, it's said here by Srila Prabhupada, and so there must be a way to do it. <laughs> but I, do, I don't know the method. I'm sorry. Well, I've heard it said that the, the only dumb question is the one not asked. So, thank you. Anyone else? Any Vaishnavi? Yes, Prabhu. I believe what he's asking is that um, Srila Prabhupada gives the example here that from brahmachari it's not required to become a grahasta. You can remain brahmachari or take, as you said, vanaprastha or sannyas. Um, but his issue is that his father is demanding that he take to the grahasta ashram and I believe he's seeking some valid argument as to uh, defeat his father so that he doesn't have to enter in the Grihastha Ashrama. So I'm going to give a little of my opinion here, if you don't mind. <clears throat> the Krishna Consciousness Movement is a movement of personalists. We're not impersonalists, so we have knowledge. We're also not jnanis, although we have knowledge and we we want gyan, and even more importantly, vigyan. What really nourishes the Krishna consciousness movement is relationships. This is stated in uh, the Nectar of Instruction, Dadati Pratigranati Guyam Akyati Prichati. So you have a relationship with your father. That's very important. So, first of all, it would behoove you to get to the root of why your father is asking this of you. 
So he's your father. He knows you very well. He's known you for longer than anyone else besides your mother, at least in this body. So find out why. Maybe he sees something in you uh, that uh, he feels uh, needs to be addressed and might be best addressed in the Grahastha Ashram. However, because uh, our perception in this material world is never perfect, it's always conditioned, uh, even if your, your father is a pure devotee, if you have communication with him, then he may have a misunderstanding of something he sees in you, and then you can talk it out. So, how many is that? Two more? So if you make a connection, if you make a con okay. <laughs> if someone could teach arithmetic to the guard, that would be awesome. Um, so, uh, no, so if you have a conversation with your father and you connect with him, and then you talk it out, and you're open to hearing what he has to say, and you make sure that he also becomes open to what you have to say, then that is actually better than just coming up with a, a statement or an opinion or you know, even a, a, a guide from scripture because so many things are there. I'm sure your father could probably also find something in the scripture if he's a devotee that will justify his position. And then you'll just be at what we call loggerheads. Then it just becomes more conflict. So connect with him. And then you bring in scripture as support for your feeling and your understanding because it's not gyan, it's actually you have a desire. So you express that desire, support it with scripture, and allow for your father to do the same thing. And then you'll come to a meeting of the hearts and everything can be solved. Is that okay? Hare Krishna. So it's uh, struck nine o'clock or maybe it's 11 o'clock, who knows. But uh, thank you so much for being with us. Grantaraj Shumat Bhagavatam Ki Jai.